apt. I'm wearing my Japanese hat for a uh, JDM vehicle. Unfortunately, you don't have a Yoshimura pipe, but that's okay. Welcome to this episode of Moving Our World. I'm really excited uh, because, well, it turns out I'm following the internet trend at the moment, which is to make videos about Pro Boxes, but I've liked these for many, many years. And prior to these, I used to love the Nissan AD, which is equally as square, but arguably the modern versions of the Nissan AD are quite ugly in the front end. Anyway, they're available in left-hand drive and right-hand drive. In New Zealand, obviously, we're a right-hand drive country. We drive on the left side of the road. For many, many years, before a lot of other Western countries, we were the world's dumping ground for JDM vehicles. Why does that matter? That just means that everything that we have in New Zealand, which is entirely normal to us, can often be quite weird to other people. For example, if you lived in the USA, you'd have to wait till this thing was 25 years old to be able to import it. In Australia, I think they've got some weird rules very similar to that, 25 years old as well. It's just a good car. There's nothing exceptionally incredible about it, apart from I love the shape. But there's also nothing wrong with it either. So we'll go have a look at every single feature of this, including the table, but we'll see how much we can really fit in the back. If you want to buy a Pro Box, before I've even finished the review, I'll tell you to do it. Just buy one. Um, they're a great vehicle. Box at. Toyota Pro Box. It's increasing in popularity literally every single day with people like Noriaro now giving the Pro Box the attention and respect it's always had inside its own dedicated enthusiast community. It's time that we take a look at the Pro Box ourselves. 2022 marks the 20th year of the Pro Box. In that time it's had two main shapes. The original shape is known as the XP50, while the 2014 model onwards got a facelift and is known as the XP160. This particular one is powered by a 1.5 litre Toyota made 1NZ FE engine. And while they also come in a 1.3 petrol and a 1.4 turbo diesel, and I am a massive turbo diesel fan, I'm specifically interested in this one due to the brilliance of the 1NZ FE. It's in the same family as the Prius engine, which is the 1NZ FXE, and we've seen that before on Moving Our World when we took a video of the Toyota Echo with the Prius engine making 13.4 second passes on a quarter mile drag strip. <laughs> But the 1NZ FE did not start life as a hybrid engine. The 1.5 litre VVTI dual overhead cam 16 valve engine produced not much more than 100 horsepower, but it's reliable and powers some of Toyota's most unique and successful post-millennium models. This includes, but is not limited to, the Toyota Vios or Belta. There was also the Toyota Yaris or Echo, the Toyota BB of which I owned one for approximately two weeks before it was crashed into and written off. The Toyota Realm or Rom, the Toyota Porte, the Platts, Auris, Fun Cargo, Premio, Orleon, multiple variants of Corolla, the Sienta, Will VS, of course the 1NZFE is in the Pro Box, it was in the Toyota Rectus, and it was even in a couple of Geely models and a Great Wall model. Anyway, that's enough 1NZFE chat for now, let's get back specifically to the Pro Box. Once I found out Zach here had bought a Pro Box, I immediately came down to check it out. You see, I've always had a thing for station wagons, especially cargo hauler types like this here, the Pro Box. Yep. I first became aware of these supremely basic JDM wagons with the 90s Nissan AD. Now the Nissan AD is still around and I even filmed a similar version of the Nissan AD when I filmed the turbo diesel Nissan Avenir wagon. Check it out, really cool video. But unfortunately the front end on the modern Nissan AD looks pre-crashed. However, to make up for the overcomplicated looks, Nissan did install a whiteboard in the dash. Anyway, again, back to the Pro Box. Yep. These wagons are designed to be delivery vehicles. They are plentiful among most companies in Japan that require goods transport, and they can take up to a 400 kilogram payload in the trunk. This makes them extremely versatile without being an overly large vehicle. How perfect. Perfect for Japanese cities, or Jamaican car park meets, or African taxi drivers, even now New Zealand farms. The rear seats are a very basic bench setup, which are backed with the same vinyl as the floor of the trunk. 
And this means when the seats are folded flat down, you have an entire cabin which can be stacked to the brim with literally anything. And as we're filming at a farm, I took the opportunity to see just exactly how useful the trunk could be. Just how many hay bales can a pro box fit? Place your bets now. This dairy farming rev falls at the white cap. Fucked up straight away. Six hay bales. Selling tractors, everybody. The Pro Box is the ultimate farm vehicle. And we know it can fit a lot of stuff, but what features does it have? Remember, the Pro Box is basic, yet smart. The front speakers are inside the dash and not the doors, which gives the doors themselves a feature of storage compartments. There is no physical glove box, but a storage shelf does exist in the place of one. The stereo is a completely standard, singled-in Toyota radio-only unit with the second DIN used as another storage pocket. It has standard manual air conditioning knobs and heater controls. A basic ashtray is also next to the 12 volt or cigarette lighter socket. Now for the best feature, a small pullout table capable of a hefty one kilogram load. Feeling like you still need more storage? Well, below the table we have another nice compartment, which is lockable due to the lack of a normal lockable glove box. As for the driver's view, this is incredibly basic. Basic is the name of the game here. With no rev counter, we have a speedometer, an automatic transmission position indicator, a digital fuel gauge, an odometer, and a clock. And those little things all feature on the small LCD screen below the speedo. Feeling like you need more places to put things? How about the shelf below the steering column? Of course, the driver's door has the same storage compartment as the front passenger's door, and the two electric front windows are able to be controlled on the driver's side, along with the central locking button. The fuel flap opener is below the driver's seat like most Toyotas of this style right through the 90s and the early 00s. Inside the trunk, when there are no hay bales, you have another small storage compartment on the left, with the spare tire tools located in a similar shaped pocket on the right. There is a ceiling light at the rear in order to better see your cargo during those late night deliveries. And in the rear, we drop to wind down windows and a single flat bench seat, which isn't designed for comfort, but more convenience and durability. This thing also sits on 15 inch Toyota branded six spoke alloy wheels. And let's take another look at that engine, the Superior Toyota 1NZ FE. It is always and will always be my go-to economic and reliable engine choice. I back up this wildly bold claim due to the fact I've personally owned one for approximately two weeks and it ran exceptionally well the whole time. Anyway, enough embellishment, let's hear this beast roar. And that's about it. To be entirely honest with you, I took quite a while to edit this video because I felt my review was a bit poor. And then my good friend Andrew, owner of such vehicles as The Mirror, which is on this channel, which you should go and watch, of course, politely informed me that my videos are more of a showcase than a review. So here we are. This is my Provox showcase. And should you buy one? Yes. Do you actually need one? Not sure. That's beside the point. You should definitely buy one. If it's good enough for working drivers around the globe, then it's good enough for me. The Toyota Pro Box, a vehicle truly moving our world. Mm -hmm.